Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hoag, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm A.J. Hoag, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Commit, don't quit. I train you to speak powerfully, to speak fluently, to speak confidently, to speak English effortlessly. When you commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, go there now, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Welcome. I'm back. I had a busy day yesterday. Busy, busy, busy with babies. Oh, and that's kind of our topic today. Someone on Gab asked me, said, hey, I, AJ, talk, do a show about ba babies and family. So why not? Let's talk about it. Because it actually is connected to our more recent topic of Brave New World. Because at the end of Brave New World, you know, in the depressing ending of Brave New World, we sort of uh, were discussing in our live show, we are discussing... Well, how do we fight against it? What's the answer, right? Huxley didn't give us an answer in that book. I mean, not really, but we did find out that indirectly he did. In the sense of, when we read Brave New World, we can see very clearly, he explains in the book, exactly how they created Brave New World. I mean, what is it? What did they do? Well, they attacked all the good things. They attacked and destroyed the belief in natural law, the understanding of natural law, following natural law. So what did they do? They attacked and destroyed faith in God, right? In They attacked and destroyed literature and philosophy. They attacked and destroyed the family, marriage and family, and children, parenthood. And those are the three big ones. Right. And then, of course, they attacked and destroyed education and made education just into programming only education and media. So there you go. So a very simple answer, as one of our commenters mentioned, is we'll do the opposite. If they're attacking all of those things to create Brave New World. To create this hell, this evil, if they attack all of those things which are part of natural law, which are good, then, of course, <laughs> one easy solution, a very obvious solution, is to do the opposite and to make each of those more strong in your life, stronger in your life, right? So increase your, your faith in God, in, uh, in Dharma, in natural law. Read and study philosophy and literature, classics think deeply create a strong family strong marriage and children and family and make your family very 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 strong and loyal uh, avoid the education system because it's just propaganda and avoid the media the mainstream big corporate media because it's also just propaganda so those five steps, and you will be free. You will be red-pilled. You will not only be red-pilled, but you will be white-pilled eventually, where you will have greater faith, a feeling of greater confidence, a feeling of greater happiness, a feeling of greater meaning in your life by doing the opposite of all of those things. See, that's the thing we, recommend, we, uh, we discussed before also how, uh, when I was talking about St. Silouan, that... You know, evil can't create anything. Evil just destroys good or corrupts good. So all you need to do is don't cooperate with evil. Again, this was Gandhi's message that you don't have to kill anybody. You don't have to do evil yourself because, of course, that makes you bad also. Just don't cooperate with it. Evil needs good to cooperate. Evil needs to corrupt us. So... If you have a strong, strong, strong family, for example, it doesn't matter what they do. They can't do anything to you, right? If you don't watch all their garbage lies in media, if you don't participate in their garbage education system, 
You're free from it. There's nothing much they can do about it. If you read philosophy and classic literature and all those old books, and you learn how to think deeply and be an independent learner, you're free. If you deepen your, your faith in God, and I'm not going to debate about religions because I know people, you know, when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about organized religions. Okay, there's a difference between, you know, the, the deeper philosophy. We might call it spirituality, spirituality, uh, and then the organizations, right? The actual churches and, and bureaucracies. Yes, I know the, the bureaucracies can be quite evil. They can be part of Brave New World, in fact. And increasingly, they are in all different religions. But that's different than the actual true spirituality, which is based on natural law, which is based on dharma. Uh, and we don't need a specific organization for that. You can do that on your own. You can do that yourself by, follow, by following any one of the main traditions of the world. So today, though, let's talk about just one of those, and that's family. Family, and I'll even use myself as an example because, you know, as I said, I was quite blue pilled most of my life in my youth, and it was a gradual process of waking up. And part of that was, I believe, the lies and the bullshit about family and having children. Because, see, in a way, they want to make us be children ourselves. We saw this in Brave New World. They want us to always be emotionally like children, they want us to be 60 years old and still acting like teenagers emotionally never grow up never be responsible never be truly confident and that's bad and that that because of that then you, we can become very selfish and we're easy to manipulate and we just we're just chasing pleasure all the time i've, I've mentioned before you know my parents generation in america they're called the baby boomers they're sort of famous for being this way they're being you know they're in their 60s and well they're in their 70s now and many of them are still emotionally like children. It's kind of sad. They're still so selfish. They're still chasing pleasure. They're still trying to pretend like they're young. Uh, it's not that they're youthful and they're active. That's great. No, it's that they, they still think that youth is like the best thing. And they try, and they try to dress and act like they're still teenagers in some ways. And it's just, ugh, it's horrible. <laughs> um, so not all of them, of course. But anyway. I was wrong. And so my, one of my main messages is that, you know, I talk about family, family, family. And one way you can make family stronger and focus on family is, of course, your family that you grew up in. So we're talking about your parents and your brothers and your sisters. This might include grandparents, might include uncles and aunts and cousins. And you can try to improve your love and connection and understanding and your closeness and your communication with these people. And maybe not all of them, of course. Some of them you might be closer to. Maybe you have one cousin that you really feel closer to. So work on that relationship and make it better. Or, you know, you know, maybe your parents. Some people I know have had some bad experiences with parents. Many of our parents are very blue-pilled, okay? But that's okay. You can still have a bit good connection with them. You can still love them. You can still have a strong family, okay? You don't have to agree about politics. You don't have to... Uh, they don't have to wake up to everything. It's not necessary, okay? It's not necessary. Okay, family comes before politics. Uh, this is so sad when, when people will, you know, like have bad relationships with their parents or with their own children, because of some political stuff. It's like, you know, politics is just a, it's an idea. It's just strangers. You don't know those people. But family are real people. So I completely disagree with some of my family about politics. Many of them are very blue-pilled. But I just accept that. And I just, I mostly avoid those topics with them and focus on other things. Because uh, they're more important than some political idea. So you can start there. Now, some people say, oh, I don't know. I tried and it's not good. Well, the other thing you can do, of course, is having creating and leading your own family, becoming a parent, becoming a mom or a dad. And uh, I waited very long. You know, I'm f my children were f born when I was 50 years old, five zero. So I'm kind of grandparent age, really. Um, and, uh, you know, was it a mistake or not? I don't know. 
you know, ideally it would have been better if I had woken up earlier, you know, if I had been uh, 20, <laughs> 25 when I, that, that's the more natural way. And it is, I, in, in general, that's the better thing to do. So I encourage you, some young people, you're afraid, you know, oh my God, how do I, I don't know if I can handle it and all this. Just do it, okay? Don't be afraid. Because, you know, the things that scared me were I was, I knew it would be difficult. I was scared of be, being a bad parent and scared of lack of sleep. And indeed, I am dealing with these things right now, okay? I, I mean, I'm, there are some days now where it is exhausting, exhausting. Yesterday was one of those days, and I was being a terrible, terrible, terrible mood and exhausted because we have these, you know, two, we have twins, so, uh, and one of them has some difficulties with, you know, medical problems, which causes him to, has trouble sleeping, and he cries a lot, and anyway, all these issues, and then, you know, then I'm worried that maybe we're not being good enough parents, I'm not being a good enough dad for them, uh, and it creates a lot of stress. It's been a very, very, very stressful, uh, what, four and a half months? Almost five months, actually. Almost five months. So all that is true. However, still do it. You should still do it. Number one, uh, our situation is a little more difficult than most. You know, when we only had the one baby at home, it was much, much, much easier. It was, it was fine, in fact. It wasn't that, it wasn't that hard. Um, number two... You'll still deal with it. You will survive it. It's it's temporary, okay? The the, the 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 sleep part, the difficulty, it's temporary. And you will be surprised that you can adjust. That even if you have one or two or a few really hard days, like I had a terrible day yesterday, very tough, exhausted, but then today I feel better. And this will happen. And it gradually, it's getting better, better, better. And it will for you too. So don't let this scare you. You know, I think sometimes... Hollywood movies, they make it look so like terrible, oh, so horrible and difficult to have kids. It's not really. It's not really. Okay, and I'm 50, I'm now 51 years old doing this, and it's still okay. So if you do it when you're 25 or something or 30, it, no problem, okay? You'll be fine. So have kids and see, this is the way to really have a strong family because then you're the leader. You are the leader. And then you can create this close, wonderful relationship with your children and with your husband and wife. And again, this is one of the, probably the most important things you can do in terms of actions to fight against Brave New World. Not political activism, not doing stuff online, not red-pilling everybody around you. Those things are okay, but in fact, a far more effective thing long-term, long-term to fight Brave New World is to actually... Uh, raise amazing children and raise them to be red-pilled and raise them to love each other and care for each other, you know, so the brothers and sisters have a good relationship and connection their whole life, their whole lives, and they have good, strong connections with you, the parents, and you with them for their whole lives. And then, of course, you're showing them so when they have children, they learn from you how to be a parent, so then they become parents, and they're also great parents. And this way, you're fighting Brave New World for many generations. You're also, in the short term, right now, creating this wonderful family of your own that's very strong, that's full of love and connection and meaning. All of these things go against Brave New World. Okay, and then you're not going to be depressed. When you do this, you're not going to be depressed. Okay, you will have a purpose, a strong purpose, a strong meaning in your life. And you're not going to be depressed just because of the media. And the other thing is, you'll be so busy with your kids, you won't have time to watch all the garbage. You won't have time to watch the news constantly. You won't have time to, to get depressed by all that crap. Okay, by all that garbage. Because you'll have something more meaningful to do. And then, of course, you can train your, whether, you're, whether you homeschool or not, you can still train your kids. And little by little, and especially as they reach middle school age, you know, 13, 14 years old, you start to red pill them. You start teaching them about Animal Farm and Brave New World and the media and TV and movies and the techniques of advertising and persuasion. And you teach them all these things. So when they're 16 years old, they see it all. They know it all. They're experts about these topics. And then you don't have to worry that they're going to follow all that stuff because you train them to see it. 
So this is the great thing. But and more than that, of course, it's just you'll have this great loving family. You have these people that are real people, not fake fakes, Facebook friends, not virtual world, but face to face, real people in your own family who take care of each other, who love each other, who have this strong, strong connection. And that is the best thing you can do practically to fight Brave New World and to be happier and to be not only red-pilled, but white-pilled. White-pilled meaning full of optimism and meaning and purpose. And those other things I mentioned too, you know, of course, faith in God would be right at the top as well, or some kind of Dharma faith and, you know, the other things as well. But family, in terms of just practical, it's such a big one. So guys, have kids. I encourage you, have children. Have a lot of children. Have a lot of them. And do it before I did. Do it when you're younger if you can. But my also my message, if you are older, like I am, <laughs> still do it. Don't be afraid. Some people also I've seen, they're afraid they're like 45 years old. Now, for women, it's different, of course. There are biological issues that can be difficult, but you could still do adoption or do other, uh, other, there are other options. But, um, but for the men especially, you know, just do it. Do it. Don't be afraid. All right, let's go. So there's my topic. Following your request to talk about family and children. So there you go. Thank you. Uh, very quickly, I'll do a, an update here. First of all, oh yeah, today, just on the screen, if you're watching the screen, you'll see a photo. This is the Gab group, as usual. You'll see a photo of me and Yurato, um, Yutaro. Sorry, not Yurato. <laughs> Yutaro. Yutaro, I met Yutaro today. He is a member an effortless English member, VIP member from Kyoto, Japan, which is not too far from Osaka. So he came to Osaka today and we met, we had coffee at kind of my favorite coffee shop in Osaka. We chatted for an hour and a half, I think, something like that, two hours, something like that. I, can't, I don't know. I wasn't tracking the time. It was almost two hours, actually. So it was very nice. He's a very nice guy, very friendly. And uh, yeah, I hope, hope to meet him again. It was very nice to chat with him. So just to show you that I do meet people. If you come to Osaka, I'll meet you. If I have the time, I will definitely meet you face to face. What else do we got here? Uh, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promote unauthorized TV just because I like it. I don't get any money for doing this. I'm helping them. Unauthorized.tv. I like it because it's media that's positive. So if you want a little bit of like some podcasts in English on lots of different topics, video podcasts, and even some entertainment. Uh, it's a nice little, I recommend get a, it's free, but you can get a subscription to support them. I have a subscription. I support them financially because we need, we need to support positive, uh, white pilled, good channels. And this is a good one. Unauthorized.tv. Uh, and they have several different topics. There's the dark stream, which is kind of political, cultural. There's the Owen live stream. Uh, it's a mix of things. He's a comedian, but he does serious topics too. They got a little kind of kids thing for about a, little, a dog. There's David the Good, who's all about building houses and gardens. I interviewed him. There's the medieval history channel uh, or uh, show, which is cool. I haven't watched this yet, but I'm going to. And there's a cool travel one about living in Barcelona. Uh, good stuff. And one about comic books. So there you go. Unauthorized TV. Just a free plug for them. Free uh, plug means uh, promotion. And then finally, of course, our listening challenge and reading challenges. Very quickly. Yeah, sign back in. One second. All right. So again, just, just going to read out some of the big numbers here that guys are, are up to now. You know, Spanna 201, Julia 192, Jose 182, Anderson, Edward 176. I don't know, Shero Hogue using my name. 146, 143, Rafael's 121. You get the idea. Lots of guys, lots of lots of lots of listening. Really fantastic. Very well. Doing very well, everybody. Woohoo. Good. So congrats to everybody. Nicely done. And then over on the reading one. Edward Anderson, 164. Again, I'm guessing counting hours twice by reading and listening at the same time. Carol, even with being on vacation, she's doing great. 78. Roberto De Santos, 
70, Sven at 67, Zibanek 59, etc. Very nicely done, guys. Keep going. Keep reading. Keep listening. I'm enjoying it myself, I have to say. Uh, again, what I find is when you're doing larger number of hours, uh, one uh, key for me is to mix the activities. So I don't get bored with just doing one thing all the time. So I do a lot of listening, but I don't listen to the exact same thing the whole time for, you know, seven hours a day. Yeah, that's too boring. So I'll listen to mini stories a lot. Then I get tired of that. I switch over to reading, trying to learn Japanese characters. That gets I get tired doing that because it takes a lot of effort. So uh, then I'll jump over and I'll I actually recently start listening to something about pronunciation. I'm not really even speaking yet, but I'm doing it just more for variety just to give my brain something new to focus on. And you can do this too. I've talked about this. Some of you say like, hey, Jay, what do I do? You know, how do I listen to the mini story? I have a mini story. You say repeat it a lot, but I get bored repeating it 30 times, 50 times. Well, what you do is you change your focus. So you listen to it for a while, maybe 10 times, 15 times, just focusing on the vocab only, the vocabulary, the meaning. And then maybe next you focus on shadowing. So you, li then you listen again 10 times, 15 times. Uh, and not the same day. I mean, just overall, right? So you, you're getting bored with listening to just vocab. You understand the vocab. So then start doing the shadowing, which is more for fluency. And then you do that for a while. And then, uh, you know, you do that many days, r shadowing the same story. Then you start getting bored with shadowing the same story. So then what? Well, then you can change and you can focus on pronunciation. So you don't even worry about the meaning anymore. And you just focus on the sounds, the sounds. And you could just focus on listening carefully to the pronunciation, just noticing the pronunciation. That helps a lot. Let's do that for a while. And then you can go back and repeat again, still the same audio, and then try to actually copy or imitate my pronunciation. So not only listening, but actually trying to do it and get the same exact accent. And even doing that, you can focus on rhythm sometimes. You can focus on the up and the down, the, what's called pitch. You could focus on specific sounds that are difficult. So there's so many things you can do, different skills to practice, different mindsets, different activities using the same audio. And then, of course, you're tired of doing all that, then go read it, get the text and read it and read it a few times. And you're kind of constantly mixing all these activities, but you're still repeating the same audios. And so this is how you get, you know, 100 repetitions of the same audio. This is how you listen to the same mini story 100 times without getting too bored. You do it by changing your focus. So you get bored doing one thing, then you do something else. And of course, you're doing this over like one month or two months, okay? Or two, or maybe two weeks, not one day, okay? But you could listen to the same mini story 10 times in a day. That easily, you could do that. Or five times or three times. And then the next day, you do it again, but you do something different. So this is how you do it. And then if you get bored doing all that stuff, then go read something. Then listen to an audio book. So you, you mix the variety. You're getting variety and repetition, and you're going back and forth between them. It keeps your brain fresh. All right, let's get to questions and comments now. Okay, now Patrick Sinamini... Uh, Ask a good question about homeschooling. I'm willing to try homeschooling with my firstborn. What should I do to structure lessons in a proper way? How long should be the least time for a kid to accommodate that experience? It's a very good question, Patrick. And there's not one right answer. And this is why I like homeschooling. Because there are so many ways to do it. There are many, many ways to do it. Some people like a lot of structure, right? I mean, you can actually just use an online program and they give you all the lessons, everything, and you just follow it step by step. You don't need to do very much as the parent. You're just more of a coach to help. That's one extreme. The other extreme is something very, very, very flexible. It's called uh, unschooling or, or you know, non-schooling, unschooling usually. And this is where you just follow the child's interest and you're doing a lot of free reading and there's very little structure. 
And then there's kind of something, you know, in the middle. I'll probably go in the middle way where I'll have some structure. The structure will be focused just on reading, writing, and basic math. And then the rest of the time will be very free and open, kind of a mix. There's something called the trivium. The trivium, which is uh, kind of what I'm basing mine on, which is a very old, very traditional way of doing education. It goes back to the Middle Ages, in fact, maybe even Rome. I'm not sure. I have to look it up. Possibly Rome, but definitely the Middle Ages, where, again, they would focus on these kind of main things of reading and writing and basic math, arithmetic, and doing a lot, you know, reading lots of classics and doing things like this, of course, depends on their age, you know, how difficult it is. And then a lot of other time free. So I'm going to interview a woman about homeschooling, Patrick. And uh, let me look on my calendar. I'll tell you exactly. I'll do a live interview. It's uh, OK. My time. It's 5 a.m. Japan time. August 23rd, that's a Friday. It's next week, next Friday. Not not this Friday coming, but the next one. The 23rd of August, 5 a.m. Japan time. Her name is Christy Clover. She has five children, and she homeschools all of them. So she has a, it's a big range of ages, you know. She, she has, you know, teenagers and all the way down to young children. And of course, the teenagers were young children in the past. So she has she knows how to homeschool all different ages. And she knows how to homeschool five children at the same time, one mom. So I think, Patrick, that we can ask her uh, we can ask her these questions and get her answer. And I'll interview other homeschoolers. And I think, Patrick, this will help you and others get a better idea. Instead of just me, I'll talk about my own experience. But right now I have babies, so there's no need to homeschool yet. But uh, I'll be interviewing lots of homeschoolers. And I'll interview ones with different philosophies right different some will be very structured and some will be more flexible and then you can get a feeling for this and then you decide for yourself you know one thing you can also do what's great about homeschooling you're the boss so you can try different approaches you're not stuck so you could try a very disciplined organized way for for six months with your children or your child and maybe you find ah oh, this is too much it's too or too structured it's too stressful or something, and then you could just relax and do be more flexible. Or you could start more flexible, and you feel like, ah, this is too flexible. I think my child needs a little more discipline, a little more organization, and then you can change. So you can change it as you go. Don't feel afraid. You you adjust, right? And even if you, if you have more than one child, you might have a different approach for each child. One child might need more discipline more organization and a different child might be better and more independent just being more flexible so you can customize we say right you can do it a little different for each child which is nice you can fit the child's personality in school you know they just do the same for everybody Okay. Yeah, like Sarah says, family comes before everything. It's important, most important thing in our life. Yes, indeed. Yes. Like I've never understood people who uh, who choose money or a job over their family. It seems like a crazy choice to me. Never understood it. Jobs can be important. Career can be important. Some people really love what they do. That's fine. But to choose it before your family is insane. Yeah, see, now Abraham says, talking about a problem we have. Today, most people, unfortunately, don't visit other family members or friends face to face. Just using Facebook or Twitter, evil social media companies are trying to destroy family. Yes, they are. And uh, this is why, again, it's important to visit face to face, face to face. And uh, 
it is very important. Actually, in good news, I have some of my family is going to visit me in Japan. I can't believe it. I kind of complained to them that I always visit them. They don't visit me. So they're coming to Japan. <laughs> so sometimes you can use guilt. <laughs> Manuel says, I've got a question. Is it fine to be at times arrogant towards other people who are always rude towards you? Because I went through it once, always, they always called me names. Now I've got more selfish. Well, yeah, you can just be more strong. I don't know if arrogant's the word, but uh, you don't have to be friendly to people. If, if people are unfriendly to you and they're attacking you or insulting you, then of course you can be unfriendly back to them and you can be tough with them. You can be, you know, However you want to do that, yes, you, you probably should. That's how you teach them to respect you. So you either cut them off and have nothing to do with them, uh, or you just kind of, you know, have to be tough with them. I'll answer this question again just because I'm happy to promote my nice friend. Antoine says, I'm French. I want to learn Spanish. Do you know a teacher like A.J. Hogue but Spanish? Yes. His name is Oscar Peyus. He's from Barcelona. And his website is unlimitedspanish.com. If you want to learn Spanish, unlimitedspanish.com. Calm. He uses many stories to teach Spanish. He also has a podcast, the Unlimited Spanish Podcast. Start with Oscar. He's a very good teacher, very clear accent, very easy to understand his Spanish. AJ, what is the best age to get married? Says back here. That's a hard question. I mean, I say generally younger is better. But on the other hand, the most important thing is to marry the right person. Right? Because if you don't, it can be a big disaster. <laughs> so you have to be very careful about it. But uh, uh, so I don't know. You know, I, I was late. I was married when I was 38. But I'm glad I waited because I got the right one. Mohammed Al Iraqi says, "I have, I'm 35 with two kids. Good, good for you. Homeschooling is not legal in my country. How can I make the school don't affect them? Well, number one, I would join the Homeschool Legal Defense League (HSDL), something like that. Look it up on online. Join that. They give you legal help. Uh, so you might be able to start working and organizing and get the laws changed in your country." Uh, the second thing is you're just going to have to teach your kids to think independently and to realize, to question what they're learning at school. Don't trust what they're learning at school. You got to teach them the truth. Yeah, like Paulika says, I can't imagine life without my little two sons. One of them is three years old. Another is three months. The government wants us to stay like Peter Pan. That's a, yes, Peter Pan syndrome. That's what my wife calls it. Never grow up and stay under control. That's right. Manuel again says, um, when you become a parent, do you need to be more disciplined towards your own child? Unfortunately, some kids nowadays are spoiled brats. They get everything they want. Uh, yes, absolutely, 100%. You have to have, you know, as a parent, you're the leader, leadership. It's a big responsibility. And part of that is having rules and uh, structure and discipline for sure. And the other half of that or the other part of that is love, of course, and affection and all of that. You need both. You need both. And some parents try to only do the love and affection, but and they think, oh, you know, just spoil my children. But that's not really true love because then your child grows up to be a spoiled brat. 
<laughs> and it, they're not happy when they're like that. It doesn't get, make them happy. So yeah, discipline's important. Hmm. Okay, I can type it on the comments. Unauthorized, someone's asking me to type it. Unauthorized.tv. All right. Continuing with comments and questions. Sorry. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, Samit says, uh, AJ, I know you've read the Gita. Do you know the Gita is part of the Mahabharata? I do know that. Have you ever read the entire Mahabharata? Mahabharata? No, I have not read it, the whole thing. But maybe I'll get a, if I find a good, uh, a good uh, translation in English, I might read it. But of course, I'd say the Gita is the heart of it in terms of the spiritual teachings. My understanding, at least. Okay. Yeah, this is a tough, tough topic. I agree having children and family. First, you have to find the right partner. That can be difficult. Yeah. You plan to do a show about that topic? Um, Maybe. I might do more. I think doing an interview, I, I would not say I'm an expert on that. Uh, you know, I did fine for myself, but telling you how to do it, I don't know. Uh... But maybe I'll find some people to interview on the, that topic. Yeah, very nice. Lisa says, I've got my daughter. She's 20. She's stability in my life. I'm very proud of you. Otherwise, she speaks four languages, German, English, Danish, and she's been learn learning Arabic for two years. Nice. Yeah, good luck to you, M MSCTV. We don't mind to become parents. It's just not happening. Well, believe me, it took us three years of trying. It was not easy. So I understand. Keep keep trying. Priscilla says, I have two daughters. Many times it's a challenge to educate them, but it's worth it. I'm a better person because of them. Definitely, I learn much, much more from them than they learn from me. Yes, indeed. Very nice. Very nice. Hey, Yutaro. There's Yutaro right there. That's the guy I met today. Yutaro. You know what? Good, good meeting you today, Yutaro. See you again. He lives in Kyoto, which is a nice place. Yeah, Akos. Very nice. Says, I'm 21 listening to this podcast. And by imagining having a big family, being the leader of it, makes me feel so good and confident. Excellent. Do it. Do it. Good for you, man. You'll be great. You'll love it. Good luck to you. Hey, uh, Vladislav, checking in from Spain. Hey, today is my first day of a trip to Spain. I've never been here before. I will be in four cities. Enjoy. I love Spain. I'm curious, you know, which cities are you visiting? Spain's great. Good place. Yeah, like Jose Ramos says, our ancestors had more children and they lived longer and were healthier. My grandmother had 10 children. She taught them good values. Yes, we can learn from our ancestors. Our ancestors in many ways were better than we are. We can learn much from them.
Mayun is asking, why are you learning Japanese? Because I live in Japan. <laughs> That's why. And my wife's Japanese and my children will speak Japanese. And I have uh, two nephews and a niece who are Japanese and lots of family who are Japanese, you know, my mom, my, uh, on my children's mom's side, my wife's side. So many reasons. Great. Merrick says, hi again. I used English a lot on my vacation. I did quite well. It's a great feeling to be able to communicate with everyone in English. Then you know that this works. Very good. Wonderful, Merrick. Congratulations. I'm glad you had a good vacation. Yeah, like Christy says, for me, family's not just blood relatives, but also close friends as well. And I agree with that. I have... Uh, one, two, three, yeah, three very close friends that I consider like family. Sometimes blood relatives are not as close as close friends. Yeah, it can be a mix. It can be a mix. Yeah, like Alamin Ali says, in my point of view, we need to focus on our family, not focus on social media. I agree. Social media is not real. It's not real, you know. Those are not real friends. A real friend is something... I realized this myself. You know, I actually... I was on Facebook for a while. Personal Facebook. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of different friends. Some, you know, some people that I actually used to be friends with a long time ago. And others. And, you know, people from high school and college and all this stuff. But I started to realize... 99% of them were not actually real friends. They're just fake, fake book friends. Even if I, though maybe they were friends a long time ago, but not anymore. And, you know, I started to realize I never talk to them. They never call me on the phone. I never call them on the phone. I almost, you know, basically never would see them face to face. Uh, never send a direct email to them. They didn't know anything about my life. Really, I didn't know anything about them, really, their life. So I realized, well, what is, so it's just a bunch of posting a bunch of nonsense and, uh, you know, lots of political stuff and got into some political fights with them. And then I woke up and I realized, you know, these people are not friends. They're not friends. They're not real. This is just, this is just words on a screen. That's all it is. It's just, it's all bullshit. It's just taking away time and energy from my real face-to-face -face friends or real family. And so my, my personal rule now, like, is somebody really a friend or do I really have a good relationship? Is it, do I directly talk to them? You know, at least on the phone. So I live in Japan and my family is in America, so I can't meet them all the time, but at least talk directly to them on the phone, right? Or send them a direct email or even just text messaging directly. But that direct one-to-one -one communication. If you're not doing that, if you're just posting stuff on social media and writing comments, that's not, that's not real relationships, okay? It's useful for us, you know, as a community learning English. It's really great. But in your personal life, it's nonsense. It's bullshit. If you want to, don't do that. Don't waste your time on that. If, if you think someone is a real friend, you want to have a real friend, then call them on the phone and hear their voice at least. You know, call them once a week and talk to them. I talk to my closest friends probably once a week, maybe recently a, a little less because of the babies and everybody's really busy. But certainly at least once a month I talk to them and they're in California and I'm in Japan. I talk to my mom almost every night, talk to my dad every week. Talk to my, I text message with my sister every week, talk to her a couple times a month. You get the point, right? And then I see Japanese family here, you know, I see them face to face. And my wife talks to her parents every day, her, talks to both her sisters every day. That's real friendships, real relationships. So don't just post something out to the Facebook and a hundred people who follow you, you know, that's fine for business. It's fine for some kind of special, like a business community or a learning community, something like our Gab group. That's, it's really great. But for your true family and closest friends, you have to do direct, direct, direct communication. That's how you know if it's real.
Yeah, like, I mean, this is a good order of things. The Bible tells us a man is the head of the family. Jesus is the head of the man. And God is the head of Jesus. There you go. Whew. Well, this is nice. Mr. Sushin Kado says, I have a family with seven members. They all speak Somali. I'm the only person trying to learn other languages. Thank you. Well, great. That's fantastic. I'm glad you have such a big family. Very nice. Very nice. All right, a couple more and then we're going to go. I'm hot. There's no air con in this room. Okay, Vladislav. Oh, good, Vladislav. You're going to visit Barcelona. Nice. Palma de Mallorca, Madrid, train to Valencia, and finish in Barcelona. Good for you. Enjoy. All right. I think it's about time. I'm going to just jump to the bottom here really quick. So Yuri says, uh, AJ, how's your summer? Nice glasses. <laughs> These are reading glasses. I'm reading your comments. Uh, summer's going well. Just i basically doing two things this summer. Uh, taking care of babies. Studying Japanese. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> that's it. All right. I think that's it, guys. I got to go. I'm getting really hot. <laughs> Need some air con in this room. Yikes. Okay, then. As always, join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Join and get on our Gab group. Say hi. Keep doing the challenge. Putting your hours in. Do as many hours as you can. Listening and reading. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. That's very important. Enjoy it. All right. See you next time. Bye for now.